Good afternoon and welcome to everyone joining us for today's PC Law webinar presented by Debbie Schaefer, CPA. Since 2005, Debbie has trained her clients on a variety of products, including PC Law and Time Matters. She has worked extensively with law firms, giving her a unique perspective of knowing both sides of the bill and matter. Debbie has also earned a reputation for quality service and comprehensive answers to complex business critical questions. My name is Mackenzie Board and I'm a client experience manager at PC Law Time Matters and I'll be your host for today's webinar presentation. This PC Law webinar presentation is designed to give you more insight into the capabilities of PC Law, an all-in-one billing, accounting, and matter management solution. This webinar presentation is complimentary to all of our attendees. Debbie will first go through her prepared presentation and then we will at the end of this webinar end with a Q&A session. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them via the questions pane located on your webinar control panel. All of our attendees will be in listen-only mode for the duration of this presentation. Debbie, at this time, I'll turn the webinar over to you. Thank you so much, Mackenzie. I appreciate that. You made me a lot younger than I am, which is just fine, but I've actually been doing this since 1985, so a little bit longer than 2005, not that it's relevant. The only point that makes it relevant is that I've worked with hundreds of law firms over the years, and I am what's called a certified independent consultant with uh, PC Law Time Matters, but I do represent other products as well, and I work with law firms to help them identify what solution they should use and what's best for their environment. So given that premise, what I would like to cover today is I'd like to cover, you know, a little bit about who I am, the components of a legal office system. Before I can tell you why PC Law is good, I need to tell you what you need to look for when you look at software, how you determine what's right for your firm, and and then I'll tell you why I think PC Law is really a very good solution. So who am I? Why should you even listen to me? I have 35 years of experience. I happen to be an accountant. As I said, I've worked with hundreds of law firms and I've spent hundreds of hours evaluating and learning solutions. So one of the things that's very imperative for my job is that I'm always up to date and I'm always know what's going on because I can't become stale. New products are introduced constantly and I must learn all those products to determine whether they are a potential solution solution for my firms or not, my clients. So I am always learning new products. I'm always keeping up to date on the environment. So what are the components of a good legal office solution? When you say that you're ready to buy new software for your law firm, you really want to identify what you're looking for because there are lots of products in the marketplace that offer lots of different kinds of solutions. So obviously being a CPA, what I typically will look for is a solution that contains accounting because to me that's imperative. Um, you need to have a solution that has accounting that will integrate with your time and your billing. And obviously for a law firm, you have to have trust accounting. It is your requirement, the Bar Association has rules for this, safekeeping rules, where you must keep good records about your trust account and who owns it and what happens with that money. We also have components called practice management. Practice management is typically calendaring, contact management, document management, conflict checking, um, I think I've covered it all. And you'll notice that those are also separate components. Now there are software that do just portions of practice management, calendaring software, dedicated document management software that can also save your emails as well. But there are also packages similar to PC Law where you're able to get those practice management components in the same place that you're doing your billing and accounting. So these are the basic components, but what happens in each of these components? So time entry, time and billing is all about entering your time, tracking your time and being able to bill. Not every law firm cares about time. You do have personal injury firms, contingent firms. You might have firms that do flat fees, often elder care is done that way. And so entering their time is not as critical as those law firms that bill by time for time rather than flat fee. However, 
it is always my contention, always my opinion, that people should keep time even if they're in one of these flat fee firms. Because the advantage of doing that is it helps you further identify the profitability of these matters. So I'm going to use elder care as an example. Typically when you do, you know, law firms who do um, estate planning will charge a flat fee for that estate planning. Now, again, not everybody's estate is the same, whether we have a business, whether, you know, we have um, lots of children, who knows, wherever our investments are, it's going to change that estate planning. So when those law firms determine that they're going to build bill a flat fee for that work, they should keep track of their time to determine whether their flat fees are in range of making a profit. Because yes, you can look at a financial statement and yes, you can see that you made money, but do you know how many files were actually winners? How many files actually made money versus did you lose money? And if you're charging 2,500, let's say on every single estate planning matter, but it turns out that it's taking you 20 hours to do that work, you're not making money on those or your actual billing rate is quite low. You're maybe shortchanging yourself. So even for those flat fee matters, I do believe that time entry is something that's very important to be considered. And that I, the objective of time entry is to make it easy, to make it quick, because you're keeping track of your time and how do you make money is you work for clients. If it takes you a long time to keep track of your time worked, then you're taking away from the time that you could be cha charging to a client. So again, if you're doing electronic billing, then you have to have required fields. You want those sort of checks going on at the time of time entry, remote time entry from an iPhone, from a portable device, not sitting at your computer could be important. Then when we look at billing, we want to take a look at what's important in our billing. So there are things that are very, very important. Number one, how do the pre-bills go? How are you going to be able to deliver your invoices? Do you want to do it electronically through email or do you want to print them and mail them? Can you do flat fee billing? Can you bill by the hour? Can you segregate and say, hey, maybe when I get to a certain point of my time, I'll give them a flat fee for the first 20 hours and then I'll charge by the hour. Are you able to put in different billing formats? And again, this is gonna be specific to your firm. So when you're looking at solutions, you wanna make sure that you've identified what's required by your firm. Do you have to submit your bills through billing clearing houses in a leads format? And if you do, that's a requirement. How do you accept payments? Do you accept credit cards? Do you use an external program like LawPay? Or do you just take checks? And do you take EFTs? Do you take wires? You need to make sure that your system that you're considering is going to be able to take advantage of what you actually do in the firm. Accounting. Accounting is unique for lawyers. There is no way for me to put that any differently. It is. You have to keep track of your trust fund, which is by client. It doesn't affect your financial statements, but you have to have books and records that show all the receipts and all the checks. You have to account for your client costs. Some firms will account for client costs as an asset and other firms where they recover those client costs in a short period of time will typically expense those costs that, that would be offset by what they collected. And then bank reconciliations, you really have to be able to reconcile your bank accounts right inside your accounting system because your books and records for tax purposes should be presented in the cash method of accounting. What that means is that income is only recognized once you receive it. It is not recognized when you create the bill. So in many of the legal accounting systems, you still can get an accounts receivable report but that those figures don't are not reflected on your financial statements. Generalized accounting package like QuickBooks, they are not meant to be for a professional industry. They are meant for firms that buy and sell widgets. QuickBooks has no idea about trust accounting. If you need to do trust accounting in QuickBooks, you have to set up a different company. You have to set up a different bank. It just does not work cleanly. And QuickBooks is based on the accrual method of accounting, which means, as I said, that accounts receivable and income is recognized at the time you actually create the bills. So it is my opinion, and I've done this for a long time, tried to make QuickBooks work, it is not the solution for accounting.
for lawyers. I know accountants love QuickBooks because it's easy and it's what everybody uses. But there isn't an accountant that I have not been able to work with on a legal accounting system. Because if I can give them the reports that that accountant needs, it doesn't make a difference what system is producing those reports. So in accounting, what, do, what are the requirements? I gave you some generalizations in the first screen, but I want you to know that there are some things you should consider. In an accounting system for a legal firm, you may want multi-department reporting, maybe by type of law. Maybe you've segregated your attorneys by type of law if you're a generalized practice. Maybe you want to do it by location. Um, perhaps you may want to do it by partner. There are in these law firms that are 20 or less, oftentimes we accumulate all the costs by partner. And so I need flexible GL formatting, chart of accounts formatting, where I can identify departments or cost centers or a practice area or an office. I want my accounting system to contain accounts payable, but that doesn't mean that those payables get recorded on the general ledger when I enter them in. If you're working with an accounting system that's part of a legal package, it's going to be smart enough to know when you put in a payable invoice, it will not get posted to the general ledger until it is paid or unless that payable is a client cost. In that case, that client cost gets recorded immediately, and then we can take a look on um, we can take a look how it's going to affect that um, file. So in other words, I want the client cost recorded immediate, immediately on that case so that I can bill it. And I may need to bill that client cost before I can actually pay it. So your accounting system should have some sort of payable system. You could do 1099s, check printing, and you'd like to have some sort of bank account integration so that perhaps you can bring transactions in from the bank account or at least bring in the bank statement. A good accounting system has to have internal controls. So when you're looking at software, you want to make sure that there are controls put in that software that will minimize the errors. For instance, I don't want to be able to write a check from my trust account for a particular file unless that file has money. So I don't want to spend money from the trust account if that client doesn't have money in the trust account. And it's good when you have a system that actually checks that for you. So that's what I mean by internal controls, separation of duties. It's always best if we could identify and have one person writing the checks, receiving the money, but a different person doing my bank reconciliations. Because obviously if I have the same person writing the checks, receiving the money and doing the bank reconciliation, I have no check over their work. And I know that for small firms, this is very difficult, but if it can be accomplished, it's a good thing. Trust account, as I mentioned, your accounting system has to include trust accounting. Trust accounting has very specific rules that must be followed for all lawyers. So you want an accounting system that's going to be able to give you the reports that you need, that's going to be able to give you the reconciliations that are required if you should get called by the Bar Association. The next component to these legal systems is typically practice management. There are plenty of practice management systems on the market that might have billing but no accounting, and then they want you to link with something like QuickBooks. Again, not my favorite solution because even though the billing and the all of the trust accounting might be done in your billing system, when you have to link to an external accounting system, there are no controls built in that ensure that you're recognizing all the money that you've received and all the money that you spent on behalf of clients in order to recover those funds. So even though many of these practice management systems will tell you, oh yeah, we've got this great link to QuickBooks. Well, that's a great link, but how are you ensuring that the two systems are balanced and reconciled? And the other thing that I always say to people is the more times we touch a transaction, the more times you have to enter it, 
the more times for error. So a good legal system, a good legal office administration system is going to be something where you enter a transaction once and it affects all of the systems within it that need to be posted. So in other words, when I write a client cost, a check for a client cost, it needs to be posted to the file, it needs to be posted to my bank account, and it needs to be posted to my general ledger. And I want all of that to happen just as a result of entering that transaction once. So these practice management systems really are about the practice of law. How can we make it easier for you to practice law, not necessarily account or accounting for the practice of law? So the components of a good practice management system are going to be document management, calendaring, document generation, maybe a client intake form, conflict checking, and maybe a CRM system. So within all of this, some of the legal accounting systems have these components, some of them don't. And this is something that you need to identify as to whether this is important for your firm or not. And so when you look at these systems, you may say, hey, look, I use NetDocs or I use WorldDocs or I use iManage. I don't need that document management. Maybe my accounting system doesn't need to have it or the integration to it. Normally, when you have a document management system, like one of the ones I've mentioned, there needs to be some sort of integration, at least to pass matter information between the two components. But again, how you handle this, this is just showing you what could be involved in practice management. You're going to look at all your solutions and you're going to decide which is going to give you the best bang for your buck, basically. So what is document management? It's typically a structured approach to storing documents and retrieving documents. Typically, it's by client, by matter, by type of law, or by type of document. And again, you need to make that decision whether you need a document management system that is a standalone, that integrates, or you want it as part of your billing or legal office solution. Um, typically, some of these all-in-ones include document management, some don't. And it, it the degree of the uh, capabilities of the document management system vary based upon all of the different applications that you will look at. A calendar. I think a calendar should be in an, auto, in an integrated legal office solution. We want that calendar synchronized either with Outlook if you use Google, it's going to be more difficult because not that many people integrate with Google, but there are some who do. And you want it to integrate perhaps with your mobile device so that if you're at court and you need to make an appointment, you want to be able to see that calendar that's in your legal office application on your phone as well. You'll have a firm calendar so that you can see all the timekeepers or workers in your firm. And then you may want to integrate with rules-based calendaring. There are some excellent products that do rules-based calendaring. Some of the systems have it included in it. If not, you can sometimes add it. Law Toolbox is a great solution for rules-based calendaring. And they have an add-in that goes right into Outlook as well, and also integrates with some of the law office automation products. Contact management or CRM, keeping track of your leads, keeping track of your customers, managing those relationships is done through a contact management system. It's a list of all the contacts that come through your firm, not just your clients, not just your vendors, but opposing counsel, opposing party. If you're an elder care firm, perhaps you're going to long-term care facilities or you're working with accountants or whomever it might be. So it's good to keep track of people who you touch, people who you talk to, entering them into a contact management system, somehow defining what type of contact it is, because then you can pull those records and use those contacts in marketing campaigns, in perhaps even holiday cards, um, whatever it might be that you're doing to help bring more business into your firm. You get a tremendous amount of potential contacts that could turn into clients and tracking them is the start to turning them into clients. What sort of reports are important for you to better manage your firm for growth purposes as well as just practice purposes? So yes, it's always great to get a financial statement that's going to show you how much money you made. But again, 
I feel that it's very important to understand your profitability from a matter perspective as well as from a timekeeper perspective. As you start to hire people in your firm, I think it's very important to know whether those timekeepers are making enough money for your firm. How productive are they? Are you having to write down their time because they take more time to do a task than you can bill the client? And that's important information for you to know. So some of the reports that you want to be able to look at might be a collection report. How is money coming in by responsible attorney? Maybe origination is important for you, but also by fee, credit lawyer, who's working on it? Maybe by type of law, maybe by um, a referral source, how these cases are coming into your firm, who's giving you all that business? So again, it's very important as you go through and you look at other systems and you look at the components of systems that you identify what's going to be important for your firm rather than what they offer you. So you have to create software requirements specifically for your firm. So all of those components I told you about are the global world. Now you have to take that global world and you have to bring it down to your specific practice. You have to prioritize what your needs are. Set a realistic budget. It's not going to be $100 to buy a package. And you're going to either determine that you're going to convert your data from your current solution or not. You're going to start from scratch. But you have to determine that. You have to propose a date. The best time always to convert is at the beginning of your fiscal year, the beginning of a quarter, the beginning of a month. Include your current pain points. So when you're identifying what software you want to use, make sure you identify what is difficult for you to do with your current solution. Create a wish list. Involve your staff because it's not just you, it's many of the staff members who are working too. Make them feel part of this. And then when you make that change, they are definitely gonna buy into it because they've been considered in picking that potential solution. So as you look at your requirements, there are certain things you wanna think about. You want to think about the number of your users, the required analytics, your billing consideration. How are you doing payroll? How is that going to be brought into the system? Do you need to have credit card processing? What is your growth? When do you think you're going to, are you going to stay at the same level? An attorney who is 65 years old is going to have a very different growth projection than someone who is 35. So you have to be honest and think of where you're going and what you want to do as you develop these requirements. Do you want an all-in-one solution? So obviously that's what I think is best, is an all-in-one solution. But there are many people who do want separate packages. That idea of having a, a true document management system that might give you a client portal for document collaboration might be something that you need and you can't use the in-document management system in a legal office solution that contains billing and accounting. You just may need more functionality, but you have to be realistic about what it is that you need. Do you need to have the ability to take information from your matter files and create documents from that information. And again, that's important for you to identify and to determine for your firm, because not every firm is going to be the same. How do you bill? How many trust accounts do you have? You need that accounting. Do you need that rules-based calendaring? And people in California use it much more than many other states in the country. Other states use it as well, but California is the heaviest. You need to know if that's something that you need. And again, as you look at these, you're deciding whether I need one vendor or I need multiple vendors. And that's difficult to identify and to know what's right. Again, it's my opinion, and this is me, only me, and I, I keep saying these are opinions, that an all-in-one solution is the best. I think an all-in-one solution with accounting, billing, trust accounting, calendaring at a minimum, contact management, works very well because it gives you the tools you need to better control your system. 
again, my opinion, these practice management systems that make you go to QuickBooks or Xero, I feel are not the best because of the lack of um, reconciliation, because of the lack of um, identifying what it is that those systems, you know, you cannot balance the uh, two systems together. I think it's very difficult to do that. And each transaction has to be entered twice. And I find that not to be a great solution. Again, my opinion. So why PC law? Why do I think PC law is an excellent solution? Number one, it's been around since 1982, I think is the year, or 83. So it is a tried and true solution. There were 25,000 installs of PC Law in the United States and Canada. I don't know what the number is right now. It is written by, it was written by four people who graduated from college, came home after they graduated and watched one of their aunts or mothers do legal accounting using a one right system. I don't know how old you all are, but a one right system was an accounting system where there was a long ledger sheet and you had a card for every single client. And every time you wrote a check, you had to stick the card on the ledger sheet so that when you write the check, it would go through to the card and the ledger sheet. There was like, um, it's not Xerox ink, but whatever, it was ink that would print. So obviously everything was done manual at that time. In 1982, we had two floppy disk drive computers. Things had come, we've come a long way. But anyway, they wrote a package. They started, it had trust accounting, billing, and accounting. That's how they started. In 2007, they added the practice management features. But PC Law is a complete, truly integrated, all-in-one solution. It has everything in it. So what are the components of the legal office solution? This was one of the first slides I showed you. And so I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you what PC Law can do for you with each of these components. The first component is time entry. They have added uh, uh, PC Law Time Matters, which is the name of the new company, has added a, a product called PC Law Go. PC Law Go allows you to enter time on a mobile device, whether it be your phone, whether it be an iPad. So you do have remote time entry with PC Law. The timesheets on PC Law are very simple to use. They have help in every single field. So if you don't know what to put into that field, it, you can double click it. It'll give you choices. It has um, uh, uh, it has built in. Um, checking so that if you're going to produce a bill for a leads matter, leads 1998 bills that you have to submit to billing clearing houses, it knows that it's going to need a particular L code and an A code. And once you identify the matter to be billed as such, when you enter your time, PC Law is going to check for those fields at time entry rather than at billing. So we don't have to have someone submit the bill, get it rejected because the codes aren't there. We set it up in PC Law so that they check those codes as those entries are being done. There is an option to do quick time entry, which means that if you want to do one entry at a time, we have a screen to do that. And then, of course, we have something built into PC Law. It's called a time entry advisor. And what that will do is that will look at potential billable events, perhaps a calendar entry, a phone call, a document saved, an email saved. And it will say, hey, you did these functions. Do you want to create a time entry as a result of doing that? It's a way to sort of give you an idea and help so that you do not lose time on your files. The other thing that PC Law does that I think is so very important is it gives you the ability to track the changes made to time entries at the time of billing. So if you have a brand new associate and that associate enters five hours to do a task on a file and as you're reviewing the bills, you realize that you can't charge five hours for that task. I can only charge two just because he's a new lawyer or she's a new lawyer. And so I don't want to disrupt the actual time that the lawyer worked. I don't want to charge the client for that entry. So what PC Law allows you to do is it allows you to modify that time entry. 
determine what you want to charge the client, and then it creates a duplicate time entry. It's called a time reduction entry, and it is marked never bill so that you can keep track of everything that's going on on that file. Number one, that's going to affect the profitability of the file, but it's also going to affect the productivity of that timekeeper. So it's very important to be able to track those changes and get them in reports so that you can identify how effective your staff is, how effective the matters, the pro profitability, and that's a feature that not every program has. So it really is a, is something very, I think, very, very useful for law firms. So that's basically how we enter time. You're going to have a timesheet. There are timers on the timesheet, which also help you keep track. You know, I used to use a Filofax. The, those of you who are old will remember that. It was such a big deal in the time. I've been selling PC law for so many years and I never used it. Obviously, I finally woke up one day and said, why am I doing my bills by hand? And I installed myself on PC law. Well, when I used to keep track of my time by hand, I was terribly shortchanging myself. And once I started to use timers, it was amazing how much more of my fees I was recovering because I was underestimating. So those of you who do charge by the hour, Obviously, the best way to track your time is as you do it. Those who go back at the end of the month and try to recreate what they've done are losing thousands of dollars on income. There is no way that you can remember every time entry. And if you're not tracking it in a, in a, um, in a, um, uh, I can't think of the word. If you're not tracking it right away, you are losing your time. I guarantee you. All right, billing. So what do you need for billing? And all of you are a little bit different because you all have different requirements. But those of you who have to do that leads billing, PC Law has leads billing built into it. All the codes are there. All the leads formats are set up so that when you go and you generate a bill, it creates a file that can just be uploaded to the billing clearinghouse. We need to have flexible billing arrangements. PC Law allows for that. You can set up a matter as flat fee, as hourly build, as a monthly monthly build. You determine how frequently you want to create those bills quarterly, monthly. You can even create user-defined frequencies. So what many of my firms do is if they have some matters that need to be billed electronically, they might create a user group for the electronic bills and build them all together. Some of my other firms which I've helped them with cash flow, you know, if you bill at the end of the month, all your money comes in at once. Obviously not everybody pays you at the same time, but to improve cash flow, I've helped firms do billing throughout the month where you may choose to do a particular part of the alphabet at the beginning of the month, or maybe a particular type of law at the beginning of the month, and then to do billing halfway through the month so that you're cycling, hopefully, the cash flow in your firm. But again, PC Law gives you the ability to either create user groups or different billing frequencies, and that's very important, and, and their billing is very, very flexible. You can also determine whether you want to automatically transfer trust at the time of billing. So if a client has money in trust, you create a bill. If you designate on that particular file that you want to transfer trust money at the time that bill is generated, then you're able to do that at PC Law. What it does is it creates a bill, it creates a trust check, and it creates an operating receipt all in one. And so you can choose to print that check at the end of billing, and you can do one check for multiple files, or you can just do an electronic transfer in the bank. But obviously, it's all going to reconcile, and there's no more functionality that you have to perform. It's all done just as a result of doing the bills. There is a pre-bill function, which allows you to look at the bills prior to finalizing them. We also have the capability of doing past due notices. So if someone does not have current charges, but they owe you money, we can send them a past due notice. Um, you can have as many bill templates as you like in PC Law. They are user uh, maintained. There is something called a template editor. So you could have a flat fee billing template. You could have an hourly bill template. You can have one template that shows the lawyer's initials, one template that shows the rate, another one that might not. Again, all up to you. And that's one of the nice things about PC Law is that you have so many templates that you can choose from. We also have in PC Law something called a settlement statement. 
sometimes I know lawyers have to go to court and they have to reconstruct all the activity that's been performed on a file. A settlement statement allows you to produce a list of all the fees, disbursements, payments, trust transactions in a format that looks like a bill. So it's nice to bring to court. It looks good. That's what a settlement statement is. So again, the billing in PC law is extremely comprehensive, very flexible, and there is not much it cannot do. You do have rate categories for every single um, lawyer. You can have an infinite number of rate categories and you can uh, define that rate category on the matter itself. And you can also have rate category overrides. So maybe for a particular client or a particular matter, you have special rates. We can identify that in PC law. We can also identify specific rates for what are called soft costs. Uh, soft costs are photocopies, uh, postage, something you don't write a check for, but you actually charge the client for. We also have the ability in PC law to create a percentage of the fees as an overhead recovery on the bills, and you can call it whatever you want. So again, that's one of the things that makes PC law so special is that all these different billing arrangements and the flexibility within the billing. So PC law has accounting. It's part of the package. It's there. It's not a uh, module. It's not something you integrate with. It's part of the package. When you write a check, it gets recorded to the general ledger. When you receive money against a file, it gets recorded to the general ledger. That's all wonderful, but also the general ledger in PC law is quite flexible, allows you to define departments. Like I mentioned before, maybe for multi-office, maybe for type of law, maybe for partner, so that you can keep track of the expenses for that department for that partner and you can even print a financial statement an income statement by department there is also cost centers that you can use pc law does have budgeting for the income statement you can actually enter a budget on your financial statement and print an income statement that would show you versus the budget or versus last year this month last year versus this month this year year to date last year versus year to date this year you can print 12 months of an income statement so that you can see how you're doing through the month all of your financial statements can be exported to Excel. So if your accountant wants everything in Excel, fine, I can give them everything in Excel. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I can also print a detailed general ledger. So accountants love that at the end of the year. All of the standard reporting is including in general ledger, a trial balance, income statement, balance sheet. And as I said, that detailed general ledger. The other part of accounting is your check writing, is your accounts payable. So PC law comes with a complete accounts payable system where you have the ability to enter invoices from your customers as they are received. And as that invoice is entered, you can then print a payable report, choose what you want to pay, print your checks once a month, once a week, however you want to do it. And it'll also accumulate information for 1099s, which you can print directly from PC law. There is the ability to have recurring entries. So if you do the month, the rent every month, or you could set up a recurring entry for your payroll. PC Law does have the ability to integrate with ADP online payroll. It is a $30 add-on a month. Doesn't matter how many employees you have, how frequently you do payroll. It is the exact same product that ADP sells as an online solution for a lot more money. So. I hope that that's still going to stay, but it's, it's a great solution for payroll. Um, I mentioned memorized print transactions. You can print your checks one at a time. You can print them as a batch. You can use whatever check format you want, stub, check, stub. You can do check, stub, stub, whatever you want. It's based on a template. That same template that I use to identify the billing formats, I also use for the check formats as well. So PC law um, accounting includes check reconciliation, have to. The, this is Their accounting system is based on the cash method of accounting. When you print your financial reports, you will not see accounts receivable, but you can print accounts receivable report. It's part of the reports that are included in PC law. You can set up a credit card account in PC law as a bank account and keep track of your credit cards and reconcile them every single month.
You can have up to 99 different operating accounts. Um, I'm glad I did bank reconciliation twice. And you can have a separate entry. You will notice that there is a separate entry for operating funds versus trust funds. Every operating bank transaction requires a general ledger. And if it's a receipt, PC law will automatically know what general ledgers to use based upon the bill itself. But if it's a check, and it's for a client cost, you'll always use the same GL account. But if it's for rent or telephone, you're going to put in a, a GL account for every operating transaction. With trust, it does not work that way. PC law knows that the trust accounting only affects the trust bank account and then a contra liability called trust funds owed. You don't need to remember debits and credits. PC law takes care of it for you, which is very nice. It makes it very easy to use. So with our trust accounting, PC Law does have those built-in controls that I mentioned in the beginning of my webinar, where it's not going to allow you to spend money for a, a matter if there is no money on that matter. It does include check writing. You can have up to 99 different bank accounts. And of course, there is bank reconciliation when it's spelled properly. Um, there is three-way tie-out if you get audited by the Bar Association all of the reports that the Bar Association are going to request are standard in PC law. And when you print them out, they are all going to balance. In the 35 years that I've been doing this, there is only one firm that got out of balance and we were able to fix it. They had a corrupted transaction, but you are never out of balance. So you could get a list of who owns the money in the trust account by client. I can get a detailed listing of my bank account in chronological order showing how the money was received, how is it spent, and the totals on those two reports are going to be identical by bank account. There is a third report called a trust ledger. The trust ledger shows for every single file that had money in trust the detailed transactions that gets posted to that file. And then the fourth report, even though it's called a three-way tie-out, there are four reports. The fourth report is your bank reconciliation itself. And on the bank reconciliation, it's going to show the exact same journal balance that all of those other reports that I discussed show. One other thing I want to mention about PC Law, though I recall that I did not put it on a slide, is that when you use PC Law, the history of that matter is maintained forever. It never goes away. So when you create a bill, those detail of those time entries or these trust transactions are marked with an invoice number, but the detail stays on that client ledger. So at any point, you can print a complete client ledger showing you everything that's going on on that particular matter. So so no detail is ever purged or taken out of the system. So that's pretty much all of my accounting portion of it. Let's talk about what PC Law can do for practice management. They do have a complete document management module that integrates with Word or per WordPerfect. Email management, email man emails can be stored in PC Law directly from Outlook. They have a calendar with a bi-directional sync to Outlook. There is contact management, and there is also complete conflict checking. So the document management system is an add-in to Word or WordPerfect. You get a little add-in toolbar. When you click Save on the add-in toolbar, a box pops up and allows you to save documents directly from that application to a specific matter. You do not need to be logged into PC Law to have this work, but you do need to have PC Law installed on your computer. There is also something called precedence in PC Law, which I think is a fabulous feature. A precedent is like a form letter, it's a template. And on that particular form, you can identify what fields from the matter you want to pull into that document. So if you are doing a medical records request and you have the contacts on that file of all the doctors, you have all of your client's information, you can have a precedent or a template, call those fields directly from a particular matter and fill in that form for you. So I think that this document generation is really a great feature of PC Law. Not enough people use it, but I think it's fabulous that you can do it. The thing about the document management system is when you save a document to a file or a matter in PC Law, you can search that document in 
the context of the document. So if I was doing a brief on a bicycle accident and I knew I had done it someplace else, I could type the word bicycle in and it would show me every place that there's a document that has the word bicycle. It will show me what matter the document's in, what's the name of the document, and I can open it from there. So for a document management system that's included in a time billing and accounting package, it is quite robust and gives you a lot of functionality. It does not do versioning, which some people do require. Email management, again, another add-in to Outlook. You can save emails directly from Outlook. You can have Outlook prompt you when you save an email and ask if you want to have it saved to PC Law. That's up to you. The emails are saved in their native format. There are no changes made to them. So if you need to pull up an email and bring it to court, it's going to look exactly like the way you received it or you sent it. And again, those are stored by matters. My clients who do use this will delete the email from Outlook because now it's in PC Law and it's stored under that matter. Complete calendar in PC Law. You can look at the calendar day, week, month. Um, you can have each timekeeper have a different color. So if you're looking at the calendar for the firm, you can determine whose appointments you're looking at. We have the ability to create what PC Law calls ticklers. It's a template of to-dos or appointments that are repetitive functions. So for instance, if I was doing um, an estate matter, I know that after the date of death, I have to pick, I have to get an inventory of the assets, I have to uh, get the death certificate, I have to go to do something at, you know, the, whatever it might be, I'm not a lawyer clearly, but there's certain tasks that have to be performed. So you could create a template of those tasks. When you go to court, you know that you have a court date. Before you go to court, you have to prepare. You may have to depose someone. Whatever it might be, you can create a specific set of tasks, put in a file number, and PC Law will create all those events for you based on the criteria that you put in that template or that tickler template. Um, you can view your appointments by matter. So in this there's something called Matter Manager. You can see all of the appointments for that particular file. And you can turn any appointment into a time entry. You can mark a time entry completed, uh, an appointment completed. So you do get a history of everything that you've done on that case. We have a complete contact management system. By default, there's a contact created for every single uh, client and vendor. And then you can actually create additional contacts on a particular file by entering additional contact records. When a contact is added to a file, you tell PC Law what role that person plays in the file so that anybody looking at that particular file can easily find all the phone numbers, all the emails of anybody who's working on that case. You can also type your contacts. So for instance, I could have a type called banker or accountant or even holiday card. And then I'm able to pull lists from my contact management in a CSV format, in an Excel format, and I can determine which contacts I want. So here I have this whole list of all these people. I can use this for marketing because I have all these accountants, I have all these bankers. Based upon the type of law that you're performing, you can pull these contacts out for that purpose. Complete conflict checking in PC Law. You can put in one name, multiple names. It checks every single record. If you've written a check to that person, if you've received money, if their name is mentioned in a time entry, if they're a client, if they're opposing party, it's gonna look at all of those tables and it's gonna give you a complete report of where there could be a potential conflict. That report can be saved as a PDF on the file or you can send it to whomever needs to look at it to determine what whether there is truly a contact, a conflict or not. Reporting, this is so very important. So we've talked about all the functionality in the program, but you wanna make sure that you're gonna get all the reports that you need. And PC Law has lots of reports. You're gonna be able to get bank reports, not just from the bank reconciliation, but you can print a banking journal for both your operating in general, for both operating and trust. Um, you can get billing reports. How much did you bill? Billing by responsible attorney, by originating attorney, by fee credit, 
productivity reports. How much time are my lawyers spending on cases? Or you can identify whether it is um, a non-billable time entry like CLE credits, vacation. You can keep track of all of that. We have collection reports which show you money received by fee credit lawyer, responsible lawyer, originating lawyer. So every law firm has different compensation policies and using these collection reports and dumping them into Excel where you have a standard Excel format that's gonna do all the calculations for compensation is perfect. And we have perfect reports to do that. As I mentioned, all of the general ledger reports, we have a WIP report, a trust listing, a trust ledger. You can just get a list of all your matters. I can even give you a list of matters by opening date. So I can see how many matters were opened or closed during a specific period of time, maybe by type of law, maybe by responsible attorney. Almost every report in PC Law can be dumped to Excel. Every report can be turned into a PDF. There is a report that shows for every single lawyer how much time they work, how much has been billed, how much has been collected, what's been written off, how much of their time had to be adjusted at billing. And I can get a very similar report for a matter. So I can get and see I, how many hours I worked on a matter versus what I build, and I could see the realized rate on that matter and the profitability on that matter. So there are all sorts of productivity and profitability reports that you can print from PC Law. These are all of the things that I think make PC Law so special. As you choose whatever solution you're gonna choose to change to, realize that it's gonna be disruptive. A change to a new billing package or accounting package is disruptive. Be certain that there is security in your package. PC Law has security so that each user gets assigned their own user ID and password, and then you determine what functions within PC Law each user can use. That's what I mean about security. Make sure you have sensible security po policies. Does that mean that only associates can see their own time? And I don't necessarily want them looking at another associate's time to sort of compare their work. You know, people get crazy, we all know. So again, security policy should be really considered. And then backups. PC Law is an on-premise solution which means that it needs to be backed up in case your server crashes. If you put it on a cloud, you better make sure that your cloud provider is doing backups and you'll wanna know what their backup schedule is and you wanna verify your backups. Whatever you use for a backup, verify it. I cannot tell you how many times over the course of my working years, people have ensured me that they have backups, they crash, something happens and they haven't had a backup for two months. So I've seen firms with 100 lawyers have to go and recreate data for a week, two weeks, whereas I've seen individual firms have to recreate it for a month or two. So you want that insurance. You want to make sure those backups are working and that you're doing them all the time. And my last piece of advice, stay friends with who your software vendor. What does that mean? Prescribe to the annual maintenance so that you're going to get the current versions. If they make enhancements to the product, you want them. You want to know what they're doing as a company. You want to get their tech support. You want to work with independent consultants like myself to help you understand the products, install them, and customize them to your needs. But you also want to know what your software vendor is doing. So I hope that I've given you enough information to show you what should be included in a legal office automation product, what PC Law can offer for you, and why I think it's an excellent solution. If there are any questions or concerns, I'm happy to answer them. All right, thank you, Debbie, for that very informative PC Law presentation. Great job. At this time, I'm gonna to turn to the questions pane and ask you any questions that may have come through during our webinar presentation today. I do have a few. Um, first question coming in from Mark. Uh, it really is more of a general question about uh, PC Law. It says, is PC Law a suitable solution for a larger firm, 50 attorneys, who must use a standalone document system like iManage file site? Or is this software more designed for the smaller law firm? So again, this is an opinion piece. 
I believe PC law can be used in any size firm. I've had firms with 100 attorneys, 57 attorneys, 20 attorneys, two attorneys, one. I've worked with all size firms. Yes, PC law can integrate with iManage. If you use the SQL version, you can automatically have the matters table share with iManage. I have that happening in many of my locations. Um, they integrate with iManage or WorldDocs or NetDocs. So yes, I believe it is a potential solution. What's most important is that it's gonna give you the reporting that you need for a firm that size in order to best manage the practice. But I see no reason why not, why it cannot use. You cannot use it in that size. There was at one point when Lexis was running, uh, owned the software that they had said that any firm of 20 or more should not use PC law. That was an arbitrary number. I don't believe it to be true. So there again, an opinion from me. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Debbie. And it looks like the other question was very similar to it. So I think you've answered that uh, both questions that are in the pain. Um, I would say let's give it maybe a minute. Uh, we're about five minutes before the new hour. Let's give it a minute for anybody else that wants to possibly ask a question. Um, and in about a minute, we'll wrap it up if not. Any attendee uh, currently uh, looking at Debbie's slide, uh, please make make a note of her contact information. She is always available to any of our PC Law customers, um, but she's a great partner for us. So please take note of her information if need be. And Debbie, I do have one question that did come in. I have a question from Michael and he's, he's asking, is there any way to get a demo? Uh, if there is a way to get a demo of this program, I'd like to get one. Yes, absolutely. There is a, a way to get a demo. You are more than welcome to call myself or one of the sales reps at, um, and I guess, Mac, you can give that information. And typically the sales reps have someone like myself or myself do the demos. But yes, I, if you would like to contact me directly, I'd be very happy to do a demo of the software. Perfect, thank you for that. And Michael, um, I'll get you Debbie's information since we have yours. Uh, we'll get that her your information and I'll also uh, give it to our, our sales team. That's great. Any other questions before we close out? Please feel free to put them in the pane now. All right, I, I don't see anybody else typing at this time, so let's conclude. This does conclude our today, our webinar today, and I'd like to thank Debbie once again for her expert advice on PC Law, and to all our attendees for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. If you would like more information on PC Law, please call us at 866-448-5800. That's 866-448-5800. 5871. I hope everyone has a great weekend and thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye.